Okay, what's up everybody? It's Tree. I'm just drawing a picture. I want you to listen to this Kathy O'Brien. I want you to listen to this because it's very important that you guys understand like what Trinity was a part of and what is going on with other people who are mind control, Illuminati sex slaves or whatever. So I want you to listen to this, okay? This is Kathy O'Brien. Listen, please. By the time I was a junior in, in this high school, the, one of my primary abusers went into the office of president of the United States. It often conditioned me that I had nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. I certainly could believe that then. I mean, who, if I could have thought to tell, who would I tell? My mother, my father? The local police that my father had pro prostituted me to? Local politicians? U.S. politicians? Now I couldn't even turn to the President of the United States. I truly believed, I truly sensed that the whole world was involved in mind control. I thought the whole world condoned child abuse. I thought that's the way life was. I later learned, after Mark Phillips rescued me, that there is a place to run and there is no need to hide. They're the ones who have committed these crimes against humanity and they have plenty to hide. And they're hiding under a blanket of national security. And I do have a place to run. It's right at them. For what they've done, not only to me and my daughter, but to all of us. Senator Byrd ordered that I be taken to McDill Air Force Base, right here in, in Tampa, for mind control programming. There was an enormous mind control effort going on at McDill, and I was taken back there periodically throughout the years of my victimization. I was also taken to the NASA installation at the Kennedy Space Center, Center at that time. Byrd then ordered that I be transferred to my first mind control handler. A handler is someone who follows orders from an owner so that I would be in key places as ordered by Senator Byrd. My first handler was a guy named Wayne Cox. Wayne Cox still resides in Chatham, Louisiana, immune from prosecution due to who and what he is aware of involved in this project. I was sent to Wayne Cox for further traumatization purpose to create a whole bunch of those compartments in my mind. Because Senator Byrd wanted lots of compartments for programs since I would soon be a White House Pentagon level slave. Wayne Cox is an occult serial killer. And he is free on our streets and he resides in Chatham, Louisiana. Wayne Cox was had been working under the direction of Louisiana Senator J. Bennett Johnston. He was running paramilitary uh, mercenary operations under, Johnson, under Johnston's directions. The way this was done is these other multi-generational children who had been raised in the project and were under mind control were triggered into action through Wayne Cox's severe traumas and told exactly where they were supposed to go and what they were supposed to do according to J. Bennett Johnston's orders. The traumas I endured with Cox are absolutely horrific. And J. Bennett Johnston took full advantage of my mind and told me that he had been involved in the Philadelphia experiment. He said that on that fateful day so many years ago, that when that ship disappeared, it came back, a spaceship, and that he had transported through time to become a senator. Well, he sure seemed inhumane to me, so this wasn't too hard to believe that he was an alien. And when he showed me in 1977, when he showed me the top secret stealth fighter 
It looked like a spaceship to me. I mean, here was this triangular ship that nobody knew about at that time. It had been kept top secret. And he was using mind control illusions and manipulation of my mind to believe that he was an alien so that I would feel totally helpless and carry out exactly what it was that he told me to do. Now, I'm not going to say that from my limited perspective under mind control, and even now that I've been studying so much else, that I know everything about aliens and Sorry. that they're all people and they're all illusions like Jay Bennett Johnston. I don't know. But I am saying that there was a deliberate, orchestrated effort to manipulate my mind to believe that my abusers were aliens, to confuse fantasy with reality, so that I would feel exactly what I was told to do. Anytime the government has secrets that can, they can keep from us, they can manipulate us by those secrets. In essence, they still remain 25 years at least ahead of us in technology, information, and knowledge, and secrets, and they are using them against us. I heard over the years, many times over, that the plan to usher in the new world order would be to make all the people in this country and around the world feel totally helpless to prevent the new world order from occurring, this world dominance plan by saying that we had been invaded by aliens so that we would say, oh please UN, come in and help us all. So bear in mind that there is a plan, orchestration, to get people to be submissive through the secret technology and information that they're keeping from you under the blanket of the so-called National Security Act is threatening the security of our nation. Jay Bennett Johnston felt like I was certainly ready for program after all the trauma I'd been through and I was being led around by his illusions anyway and sent me to Tinker Air Force Base for programming. Tinker Air Force Base is in Oklahoma and I endured mind control programming there that was to confuse my mind with the Walt Disney theme of Peter Pan and I became a Tinkerbell. At Tinker Air Force Base, I was programmed to carry out a criminal covert operation that involved J. Bennett Johnston's mercenaries. When the mercenaries were flown into South America, he did not want the plane to come back empty. It came back full of drugs. It was a genetic effort to have united a cult serial killer, Wayne Cox, with my multi-generational genes in an effort to create what they hoped would be a perfect robotic spy to carry out whatever they wanted her to do with absolutely no conscience. Right after Kelly was born, Bert said, okay, that's enough trauma, and Kelly's born now. Why don't you be transferred to Nashville, Tennessee, to my second and then, as ordered, transported the cocaine across the state lines and into the state of Arkansas to a remote airport in Washita Forest. I've since identified that airport from pictures as being Mena Airport. It was 1978, and Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas at that time. That was my first encounter with Bill Clinton. I delivered the enormous shipment of drugs as ordered and also delivered a message, a little packet of information, and a personal stash of cocaine from J. Bennett Johnston to Bill Clinton, which I watched him snort. He did inhale. <laughs>
it was a genetic effort to have united a cult serial killer Wayne Cox with my multi-generational genes in an effort to create what they hope would be a perfect robotic spy to carry out whatever they wanted her to do with absolutely no conscience.